Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a mouse theremin. Theremin, you all know, is an instrument, a two antenna based instrument that tracks hand motion and vertical in space. So vertical movement is usually amplitude and horizontal movement is usually pitch. Uh, and that's what we're going to set up to control. So to start, uh, we're going to do this with the start with from the start backwards. Start from the end. Uh, we need a, an adjustable oscillator. So we need an easy DAC that we can place down in our patch. Then um, can use a rectangle wave, which will default to a square if we don't give it a phase or pulse width argument. Pull that in. Um, that's going to go into multiplication, which we'll use to scale amplitude. Um, we can use floating point box that goes to um, a message. Say dollar sign one, 50 milliseconds. This is headed to, oops, got a little ahead of myself. This is headed to a line. Line is headed to amplitude. Amplitude's headed out. Let's add a live gain slider. And since we're in mono, oh, let's, we can do this in stereo. Up here, we can take the same setup to control frequency of the uh, square wave. So if you lock the patch, turn audio on, um, nothing's happening because no matter what the argument is, both amplitude and frequency are set to zero. Let's go in for something like 220. And if we move it up and down, we'll get a pitch shift. Frequency shift, amplitude, go up or down. Now it's going into the negative, so as an adjustable box, this is not ideal. I should do a little bit of uh, patch inspection. Let's move this over so you can see it. I expect the number box going to amplitude. I'll give it a minimum, minimum of zero a maximum of one. So I can't get negative amplitudes that would also destroy. So one it stops, one it stops. And that's good. All right, well, turn on the sound. Goes up to one, down to zero, can't go past. All right, so we've got that so far. That's our adjustable oscillator. It's gonna to respond to uh, frequency and amplitude changes. So we need to be able to track the mouse. And this is the most simple way this, that we're gonna set this up. We can do this a little better and maybe a little more interesting. Uh, and that's gonna be in part two. But first part is we're going to just track the mouse with mouse state. So mouse state. When mouse state receives a bang, it sends out the X and Y location. Um, it also tell you if the button's down or up. Horizontal is X, vertical is Y. It can tell you how much it's changed since the last bang if you want to track motion. We're gonna deal with up and down buttons and the horizontal vertical position. So it reports it every time it gets a bang, so that means we need to bang it a lot at a relatively quick rate. Um, we can use a metro object for that. We can give it a rate of maybe um, 
50 milliseconds would be fine. And a toggle to turn that on. And then now if I hook up, number objects and turn on the Metro then you can see it follows my mouse. So I go over here to the edge it gets up to here about 1090 um, all the way to the far edge of the screen should be 1440 this gets around um, from top 0 to bottom about 900 and so zeros on the left, zeros on the top, your maximum horizontal is to the right, your maximum vertical is down. So we can use that and um, <coughs> scale those two numbers to pitch and amplitude. And since we perceive pitch and amplitude exponentially related to frequency, or pitch and loudness exponentially to frequency and amplitude. Let's do, uh, uh, let's use MIDI pitch for our scaling, then convert that to frequency. And let's um, use dB to scale our amplitude. All right, so unlock the patch. Scale, in this case, my horizontal, 0 to 1440, is going to be scaled from MIDI pitch 0. Let me go back. Let's do those in floating point. Uh, let's scale MIDI pitch from 0 to 127. Since I'm still running the metro into mouse state, you can always see the mouse values changing. Then you can go one another, let's say to um, change MIDI to frequency. And let's take a look before and after. Let's have floating point here and floating point there. This is going to be our MIDI pitch that's scaled. So you should go up to 127 at the very end. I've gone off to the side of my screen where I still have desktop space. You can see it just keeps going up uh, to zero. I went over to my other monitor. That's why it went negative. And um, hook that up to the MIDI frequency conversion, then to a box just so I can see it. So pitch 127 is going to give me a frequency of 12,543. Right. Then I need to do this again for amplitude. Amplitude was the 0 to 990. 900. So let's change that. Then let's have a dB range, which would be, um, and remember, zero then is our maximum. 900 is our minimum amplitude. So our maximum amplitude should be zero dB. Let's make our minimum amplitude 48. I never want it to be completely quiet. So when I go to the bottom of the screen, I just want it to be soft. So we'll say minus 48 dB. So that's going to. Give me decibel values all the way down. And instead of using MIDI to frequency, I'm going to use dB to amplitude, dB to A. And so now to get all the way to the bottom, there's still some amplitude. It's kind of soft, but it's still there. As so I go up to the top, it should be 1. All right. So I've done an exponential scale of linear data. That's going to make more sense. Now I'm going to send these someplace. So let's bring this over a little bit and pull over the amplitude a little bit. So I can connect them. I'm going to use send and receives just to make this a little bit cleaner. So over here, this is frequency. I'm going to say send um, frequency. A 
over here, I'm going to say send amp. And now, over in this part, corresponding receive frequency. And a receive amp. All right, and if I turn this back on, lock the patch, turn it back on. We get louder as they go up, softer as they go down, lower in pitch, higher in pitch. And I can circle around and you can hear things changing as I go through. And it's just tracking the mouse state. Okay, now, a few little weaknesses if you're going through. Uh, it's always tracking. Uh, if I have the metronome on, even if I have the metronome off, that value has still been sent, so I have to turn it off. So if I want to make this just a little bit more usable, then I'm going to uh, add in a gate. So let's turn off the processing. So I want to make this a little more usable, add in the gate, probably was talking over the sound and you're not hearing me very well. So let's go back over here. And remember this uh, up and down can be used. Um, so you see whenever I click the mouse down, um, opens the toggle or turns the toggle on, let go, turns the toggle off. So let's put it over here. And what we're going to do is make gates so that these numbers will only pass through when the mouse button is down. This will be our start. And when the mouse button goes up, we want to turn the amplitude all the way off. So we're going to do two things with this. So let's make two gates. Line it up. And let's make a copy. Okay. So data goes in the right inlet of each. The toggle is going to turn both of them on and off. So now if you follow along these numbers down here, it will let's turn on the metro. They will move when the mouse is down. But when I let go, they stop changing, although these are changing. Okay. So there's one other thing that we need to do, because if I turn this back on, you'll see, let's um, lock the patch, start the metro, turn on audio, and you'll see that I'll move around and it'll change, and I'll let go and it'll still be sounding. Okay, so that when I let go of the mouse, the last values were sent, stayed as static values. I want the theremin to make sound when I'm pressing the mouse down and stop when I let go. So we're going to do one other thing. So take a look. 900 is our negative value. Um, 48 is not quite silent amplitude. What I really need to do is send a zero. And I'm going to um, go over here to the left, and let's add in a select, zero. So when the toggle is released and it sends out a zero, it's going to select. It's going to uh, go to a message of zero amplitude message just a zero, but then that is going to be sent to amplitude. So assuming this works right, and I think it will, uh, there we go. Sound, and when I let go, the zero is sent over, and the sound shuts off. So now, only when I put the mouse down do I get sound. And it shuts off when I let the mouse go, when I let the mouse up. 
And so that's a basic mouse theremin. It's using my whole screen. It's mapping my whole screen to pitch and dB to go through, sending those out to an adjustable oscillator. So in part two, I'm going to show you how to do this with a, an LCD, and I'm probably going to break that down into a few steps as you go through. All right, that's it for now.